Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to look at five great piano written songs, which are by five incredible female singer songwriters. And we are going to look at the riff or the chord progressions, which are going to be great. Um, we are also going to look at the pattern or the rhythm pattern, if you will, and the way the two hands are going to interact with each other. And we will try and do this at varying skill levels. So even if you are a beginner or if you've played these songs before, you may have forgotten a few intricate details which these singer-songwriters do on the piano which is quite incredible really because they are doing some amazing piano work while singing, while entertaining the crowd perfectly well. So let's get cracking right away with Alicia Keys' Falling. It's on two chords, E minor and B minor. More specifically, B minor 7th. So that's E minor, G, B, E. And the B minor 7th will either be played as A, D, F sharp in the right hand or F sharp, A, D in the right hand. Okay, E minor, always G, B, E. The B minor 7th is going to be played as A, D, F sharp for the first instance and F sharp, A, D for the second instance. Now, if you play the song like this, mm, mm, mm doesn't really sound like falling, right? You need that really nice, iconic Alicia Keys up edge your pattern. So let's get right to that. So you have the voiced chord, which is G, B, E, and we've arpeggiated it as... Okay, so if I have to look at this from the piano perspective, if this is my left note, middle note, and the right note or the high note, it goes... L M H H M L okay or G B E E B G so the first chord is supported in the left hand with a nice E bass okay and the second chord is B minor 7th right which is you play B in the bass and you play A, D, F sharp in the right hand. Now you may be wondering, why don't I have any B in the right hand? Because it's B minor 7th. Well, the B is played in the left and you don't need to repeat the B here. Which is why she goes A, D, F sharp, F sharp, D, A. Another way to remember this could be a D major chord in the right hand with a B in the left hand. Okay, so E minor. B minor 7th back to E minor 7th or just E minor and then B minor 7th played in a different way you want to play it with the F sharp in the bass F sharp A D first time was A D F sharp now it's F sharp A D okay so then B minor 7th E minor Different version of B minor 7th. Goes on for pretty much the whole song, right? And a good way to play it with feel is to build the dynamics. You could first think of a nice hill curve and go up and down the hill. In other words, get gradually louder and gradually softer over time. could also depend on your vocalist or your own vocals okay let's now get to the chorus where you take the same chords but you voice them differently and you play them with a more busier or harder hitting rhythm so if you take the E minor 7th chord she goes B D G plays it a bit higher okay and the way I'm playing the pattern is left first and then the right plays the remaining hit points of the 6 by 8. This is the 6 by 8 song. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Even the arpeggio was pretty much that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So the chorus is also going to be 6 but without arpeggiation with just chord strikes so you go 
left right 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 left right 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 split that's adds adding up to six right so i keep on falling in and out of love Let me break that down. B D G E minor, E minor seventh, A D F sharp in the right hand to play B minor seventh. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three. And then it ends with a very exciting chord, which is that, right? So it's A D D sharp G. So this is at the very, very end of the phrase, right? Where the way that I love you, right? So it creates that real um, uh, kind of tension or excitement at the end, and it's also played in a staccato. If you want to call this chord something, it's like a B seventh with a sharp nine and a sharp five. It's a very very interesting chord. So it's the last chord of the chorus. I keep on falling in and out of love with you. I never. Love someone way that I now love you. So what Alicia Keys does with the B minor is very interesting. She plays something like this. She just plays the top B and then comes back down. So it would be. Sometimes she also goes. She basically plays each inversion of the B minor chord, starting from the top B and then going even sometimes to the high D. So at the end of the song, what Alicia Keys does in some of the live versions which I've managed to catch up with will be she plays the E minor seventh. And then instead of playing a normal B minor seventh, she plays a Sort of diminished sounding chord, so we actually call this a B seven flat nine because there's a B in the bass, and then like a diminished seventh chord in the right hand. In this case, we have A diminished seventh in the right hand. A C E flat F sharp, right? So this creates a, some excitement in the bridge. <sighs> And way that I love you will have to be A D E flat G. Simple chords, E minor, B minor, but the way she plays it is obviously very unique. Uh, unique arpeggio pattern. Uh, definitely, chord voicings are very exciting. So it's a song you definitely need to learn. Moving on to the next song.
Right. So now let's look at Taylor Swift's Cardigan, a new song which was released recently from the album Folklore. So basically you have the chords which are F minor. Let's learn the chords first. So this is how she plays the chords. F minor is played as C F A flat. The next chord is B flat major which she plays as D F B flat. These are all what we call as inversions. So C F A flat and then Da 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 B flat major which is D F B flat da 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 A flat major she plays as C E flat A flat okay and then the next chord or the last chord in the sequence is again B flat major which is a repeat of what you learned earlier D F B flat so pa da 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 i'm singing the right hand which we are going to get into very shortly da 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 F minor da 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 B flat major da 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 A flat da 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 B flat major okay and what i'm proposing you do is because you don't have an a, a base note of each of these chords right so you could develop a nice technique where you go da 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 so holding down the sustain pedal hold it down go up to the chord which i showed you c f a flat So the first hit is going to be the root of each of these four chords. So for F minor, pa da da F chord, 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 da 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 B flat, chord, 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 da 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 A flat major, pa da 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 B flat again, pa da 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 F, da 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 da. It's also important to note. that this song is on a swing time feel so you count u da 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 two and the da 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 the one e and the two e and the three you could say 16th note swing if you count it as da ba da ba da ba da ba three e and the da 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 okay so let's do that da 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 if you'd like you can even do da 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 like a really deep f you get two of these octaves if you want because there are a lot of layers in the song which you could replicate with octaves in the bass b flat okay remember you need the pedal okay coming to the right hand which i'm sure you can actually get by ear we go okay so the first part f minor So ba da 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 it lands this f will land exactly at the one beat of the bar e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 1 e and a 2 e okay and she starts each of these melodic phrases in the right hand with her thumb playing c pretty much c for every single chord okay so the first two melodic phrases are pretty much the same F minor next B flat major same for A flat she adds an extra note da 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 only in the third chord but start with C with the top G then same way of playing B flat how you played earlier F minor pa dum pa dum da 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 B flat major dum pa dum da 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 do A flat da 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 B flat okay Vintage deep brand new foam high heels on cobblestones when you are young they assume you know nothing right so it's interesting to play this and sing it'll be quite a job actually so it's quite incredible that all these songs which i've chosen the artists are actually singing and playing this on the piano of course they've written the song it's a re- all these songs i think have really cool chord progressions as well but the that the reason why i chose these five songs and why i think they are great is is the fact that you have 
a melody line which is complementing the piano so well it's like they are almost talking to each other in the sense right Where, whenever taylor swift plays this melody the vocals come after the melody so it's like this is speaking and then the vocals are singing right so it's very it's very good songwriting as well but that also makes for a little bit of a tricky practice when you're doing this on the piano okay so the other sections of the song are pretty much around the same lines you just need to learn the other available chords when it goes to the chorus gets very positive right it goes to the root or the tonic of the scale which in this case is e flat major e flat b flat and then it repeats da 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 a flat ba da 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 it's only that first chord e flat to have that positivity at the chorus or to just give the song a lift so this is taylor swift's cardigan i hope you're going to have fun playing this song and singing along let's move on So let's learn love song by Sarah Bareilles. First of all a really good chord progression which I'll show you and then we'll do the rhythm pattern. Okay? Both of which make the song very very iconic, very catchy, very rememberable and unique and all those other words. So you go G minor first chord. She plays it as G B flat D in the right hand and G bass. So how it's going to work is every pair of two chords is going to be played three beats and then one beat okay so the first chord is g minor okay that's three counts of g minor 1 2 3 4 what happens at the four you're doing the next chord and the reason why the next chord lasts for only one beat or one count is because it's a passing chord that's because the notes of the chord are there to lead up to the next landing chord which sounds more stable so you do three beats of g minor one beat of f major with an a bass so that makes it already a very passing f if you will or a very uh, sliding or a anticipation sounding f so we call it f slash a it's known as a slash chord and this seems to have the ability to take us to the next chord B flat which she plays it in a very unique way she plays it as B flat C F so it's not a full B flat major it's B flat sus 2 let's do those three G minor F major with an A bass climbing to B flat sus 2 and remember how it works 3 plus 1 so one chord will be played for three beats the other one will be played for one beat so G minor 3 F with A bass played for one, B flat sus two. Let's move on. Normal C major, but inverted. She goes G C E in the right hand with a C bass, and then sliding or shifting all the way up to D minor, which is a climb actually. So so far we have G minor, F major, F A C with A bass. B flat sus two, C major played as G C E in the right hand, and then that goes to D minor for three beats. C over E bass that creates a slash kind of effect, which is for one beat. So D minor three counts, C over E one count, and then resolves to the tonic F three beats. D over F sharp because it has to come back and loop back to G minor, which it does perfectly well. So the artist is using basically a concept called secondary dominance, which is to take chords which are out of the scale and then bring them back to a chord which is inside the scale. In this case, one might argue that the scale is F major. So you'll have one chord which is not part of the scale or a secondary dominant or even a slash chord, and then that comes or pulls back. 
to a chord which is F major, which is in the F major scale. So if I break down the chords again, remember three counts for one chord, one count for the other chord, okay? G minor, F over A, B flat sus2, C major, with C in the bass, G, C, E in the right hand, D minor, C over E, F major, come all the way, D over F sharp, and back to G minor. So there's slash chords, secondary dominance, and you actually feel like the, the bass or the chord progression is actually climbing, which it is. If you sing the bass notes, it'll go, ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, F sharp, G. So the way Sarah Bareilles plays her chords, the chord progression is incredible. But now what's going to make it even more awesome is the way she plays the rhythm pattern on the piano. Okay, so I'll play you and then I'm going to teach you very, very carefully. I'm going to play it and then I'm going to share it with you step by step. Okay. As you can see, the right hand is just thumping away. One, two, three, four. It's very pulse-like, following the pulse or the head movement of the listener while, uh, while the song's playing. The left hand, however, is following a very syncopated or very interesting groove where she plays G, A before the onset of the right hand's chord, F over A. So in other words, that's played, where are we playing it? It's played at 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, right? Just before the 4. Remember I told you, in the right hand, it's 3 beats for one chord, 1 beat for the next chord, and then 3, 1, 3, 1. In the left hand, it's 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one right and also she's playing this with a ton of dynamics all the slash chords or rather all the passing bass chords you know with a, a different bass are played legato to kind of make the journey a bit more squeezing if you will uh, while the downbeat or the one of the bar is played staccato to create that excitement i guess right long shot long shot long shot long shot uh, uh. So there's a lot to practice actually. This could be like a awesome piano exercise on its own, right? So you go short, long shot, long shot. And all those notes are different notes. They are climbing bum, bum, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, F, F sharp, G, A, B flat. Three. Remember, the left hand is played at the offbeat every alternate time. So, offbeat every alternate and staccato going to legato every alternate. Wow, that's a lot to think of, come to think of it, right? So, the right hand just plays pumping quarter notes. So, let's break the right hand and left hand once more. And uh, yeah, you pretty much follow this for the rest of the song as well. I have the chords attached. Do download a, a copy for yourself. So, you go G minor, F, B flat, sus2, C major, D minor, C, F, D over F sharp, G, F, and so on. Let's just show the right hand without me talking too much. Okay, do that again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One more time. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, with the left. A, B flat. C.
right? And what she does also to top it off at the very last chord, right? Uh, F. For some reason, she plays a tritone of G, C sharp, which then comes back to G. But it's played so. Short and crisp that you don't feel it. You just feel a tension. You're like, where did that come from? Well, it came because of a very, very weird interval called the tritone, which is used to add that excitement in this piece, right? So this is love song by Sarah Bareilles. Let's now move on and have fun playing it. Let's now learn Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. An incredible song and again an incredible chord progression. Actually, it started off as a guitar composition as some of you may know. So, we are just going to bring in the flavor of everything, not necessarily zeroing in on the piano part because that might be quite difficult even for me because Nora Jones is improvising a lot in this song. So, let me just play you the whole thing, try to sing it, then show you how to voice it, then let's look at a couple of rhythm patterns which you would play and accompany yourself or someone else who sings okay okay so that goes so it's basically a descending walking line right la da te ro to re to re so when we voice those chords which are a lot of chords eight chords to voice we need to get the voice leading to kind of be very well planned so that it goes la da re ro ru ru to ru okay so we go first chord b flat major 7th where she plays b flat d a at the top so la da b flat major 7th dropping to the b flat dominant 7th so you go b flat and then b flat with a flat at the top okay that would have made it b flat major 7th B flat dominant seventh. Now we don't really have that F, so this is a very sort of sparse voicing where the chords don't really clash. She's not choosing to play all the notes, just a few, you know, important notes, which are the third and the seventh. If you keep that in mind, the third and the seventh of a, a jazzy chord will always have that color and that impact. And the root is generally played by maybe the bass player. The fifth may be played by no one. So you go. B flat D A, B flat D A flat, and then this is how I'm voicing E flat major seventh, which is the third chord. One five, E flat B flat D G, E flat B flat D G. Okay, that's how E flat major seventh is voiced. Very colorful, very grand, very open. Okay, so so far we have. B flat major seventh, and what she tends to do is, or what even the guitar player tends to do is, goes back to the normal root. Major seventh root, dominant seventh, stay there, or can go back to the root. So, right, or works also fine. Ta -da -da. saw the sun so that one line has all these chords so b flat major 7 b flat dominant 7th and then e flat major 7th voice this way da 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 d a c f sharp this is how i'm playing it i think it leads well okay what are the four chords again b flat major 7th B flat dominant seventh, E flat major seventh, D dominant seventh. 
Okay, that goes over that first line. Waited till I saw the sun. Okay, slower. Waited till I saw the sun. Okay, and now don't know why I didn't come. That'll go G minor seventh. Don't know why I didn't come. How does that work? G B flat F G B flat F. That's how we are playing the don't know why part. Don't know why. C dominant seventh played as C G B flat E. C G B flat E. So don't know why I didn't. It's a beautiful chord. This is F seven sus four. So I guess it's voiced as I'm hearing it. F in the bass, obviously. Sus four note, which is B flat, and the dominant seventh or seven flat, which is E flat on top. So don't know why I didn't come, and it ends with just a normal traditional B flat major. Finally, right? Everything else was like very very jazzy. So uh, again. Don't know why I didn't come. Oh, don't know why I didn't come. It repeats a few times, right at the end especially. So whole thing again. Waited till I saw the sun. Yeah. Don't know why I didn't come. Again. Left you by the house of fun. Don't know why I didn't come. Okay, and if we have to make it rhythmically exciting, you can do very much like the guitar hook, which is anyway being played. Okay, so you could either tell yourself, okay, should the right hand do a little bit of movement, or should the left hand do some movement? So if your right hand is doing some movement, the left hand could just hold its ground, hold it. Just hold the roots, or else the left hand could tell itself, okay, I'm going to do something. So So what's the left hand doing? It's basically fifths and the root, of course. B flat fifth, B flat fifth, E flat. It's fifth, D fifth, G fifth, C fifth, A F, and then back to B flat. So you could get the left hand to go. C. Okay, that sort of lovely bass motion, right? Pom 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 pom. Very much like a traditional bass line. You can even explore the right hand notes in a more arpeggiated manner or in a more melodic manner, depending on your vocals. Whether you're trying to sing and play this, which will again probably be a little bit more more on the tricky side. You can even play this song by just holding the chords. Waited till I saw the sun. Don't know why I didn't come. Okay, and just to kind of finish it off because I'm very tempted. There's another part and it's really easy. It goes. What do we have there? That's the second part. My heart is drenched in wine, right? What do we there do there? G minor seventh, which we learned earlier. There's a beautiful C seventh voicing where she goes C B flat E A. You can call this a C seven thirteen. The way we adding that thirteenth note. So heart is drenched. She's even singing the thirteen. And then a piano lick, whatever you want to play on F is dominant seventh. Okay. My heart is 
Ending, you'll be on my mind. So you get that F E flat D C and back to. So let's now move on to the last song, which is going to be the most peppy or dancey of them all. Let's move on. So let's now learn Walking on Broken Glass by Annie Lennox, one of my favorite artists and songwriters and songs of all time. So how it works basically is you have the melody line, you have a string or a synth hook. So I'm going to teach you both, right? So this is just to kind of embellish the song and to give it a stamp apart from the hook uh, which she sings which is walking on walking on broken glass right that's obviously catchy but then what the piano is doing and what the synths and the strings are doing are also awesome so i'm going to just tell you the hook in the beginning and then also this part you can actually do as an accompaniment with the vocal singing the uh, singing the piece right so first off the piano intro goes something like this or rather this is how i voiced it for the right hand which could also allow your left hand to do its thing so i'll play it and then show you Right, very interesting use of octaves. It's it just goes there, comes back. Sometimes the octave gets really high. Sometimes it comes back low. So the way I'm playing it, uh, which works for me, could be C G E. So you do C G E, and the two E's you play together on the piano. C G E, and then F A F. the f comes together and then you play two more notes together e c e c g in the middle end with two d's okay that way you get a feel of the song with just one hand let's try this again c g e together f a f together e c together g single d together let's do that again one more slower c g e f a f e c g d so that's your intro which you could do with the chords once you learn them more commonly you could just play the chords in your right hand and you could play the bass notes of those chords in the left hand i'll play you the chord pattern as well and then let's break it down as you can see lot of these notes are at the off beats right so if i count this with ands or eighth notes it's going to be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and very few are even on the 1 2 3 4 4s they're all 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 pretty much everything's on that off beat phrase so let's break that down first chord at the one g c e with a c bass then you climb up you climb the bass up to e you play the right hand c e g g c e c e g c f a with the f bass so so far we have g c e c e g c f a back to c e g with e bass let's do so much Okay, one and two and three and four and one and two. Very victorious for some reason. Okay. Get that. G C E. You see the different versions of C major which she uses, right? Right. 
right? So GCE, CEG, CFA, CEG. Let's move on. Then go back to F, CEG with E bass. Repeat that. Then end with a dominant chord, which is G major, that pulls it back to the tonic. How am I playing G major? D G B. So. Again. This goes walking on, walking on, broken black, on, looking on, broken glass. Right? It's quite a workout actually for the mind because if you're singing it, you'll have to sing something which is sort of against this. So these are the two catchy parts of walking on broken glass. You also have the chordal elements. Since you've been born, la, da, 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 da. Right? I, I've actually put the chords out for all the songs in this entire lesson series. So do go through them. In this video, I've tried to give you the most important parts of the song. We've not gotten to the theory as such of these songs. But I hope this was helpful to give you at least the most important or the surviving parts of the song. And hopefully I've also conveyed how these songs are awesome from the point of view of the theory, the chord usage, very unique chord progressions, uh, also the piano playing, the rhythm phrasing, the arrangement in general, right? Some incredible songwriters, all these five artists are and you should definitely follow them again this is jason here from nathaniel do subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already share the video share other videos leave us a comment with stuff you'd like to learn we'll be happy to do it and consider it for sure and i will catch you in the next one cheers